All right, so we're going to start our first uh, yeast dough today. We are using um, active dry yeast today. So we can pass this one around. So yeast is a biological leavener, which basically means that it is alive. And um, through its activity, it actually produces leavening in our breads. So we have already done uh, two other types of leavening. The first one was chemical leavening, right? So we use baking powder and baking soda, right? Um, the other was mechanical leavening, which is like the creaming method, okay? So we've done both of those already. What we're uh, gonna do today is uh, yeast bread. So this is, this is our first time working with yeast, so we'll introduce uh, what exactly yeast is and then how to work with it, okay? Um, so yeast is naturally occurring. So it is actually all around you. It's on uh, different uh, fruits that you find at the grocery store. It's probably on your skin right now. It's just in the air. Um, the first bread, in fact, was probably just made by mistake. Like someone probably just left out some uh, dough and some yeast fell onto it, it started multiplying and it created sort of a, um, a fluffy dough product as opposed to like a cracker, which is what uh, the first breads kind of were. So if you think about unleavened bread, that's more like a cracker. Um, this one is uh, fluffy like the sandwich bread that you're used to, okay? Okay, so there are three different types. So these are just basically the ways that um, yeast can be purchased at the store. The first one is fresh. So fresh yeast has to be refrigerated and it has the shortest shelf life. Okay. Um, the one that we're gonna be using today is active dry. So with active dry yeast, um, it has basically been, uh, like it says, dried out, but that keeps the yeast in a dormant state to where um, we can reactivate it as we need it, but it has a much longer shelf life than the fresh yeast, okay? So with active dry, we can probably keep that somewhere around one year before it starts losing effectiveness, right? So what they do is they take live strands of the yeast uh, and then coat it in the starch. So what you're actually looking at when you're using the active dry yeast is sort of a, a starch coating over yeast, right? So we'll pass that one around. Um, different brands have different like size grains, um, but they all kind of look about the same. They have a real strong yeasty smell to it. Uh, a lot of people think it smells like beer. Um, instant would be the next one. So similarly, it uh, also is dried out and it is a product that you can find um, in this granular form. However, it's a little bit more fine, right? So. With instant yeast, you can actually pour it directly into uh, your recipe, the same as with uh, fresh yeast. Active dry absolutely requires a period of uh, hydration to basically wake it back up and dissolve that starch uh, uh, content that's on the outside of it. So when you get ready to use it, you're gonna essentially have to wake it up. So it is alive, and it's a fungus, okay? So since it is alive, um, we need to make sure that we keep it alive until it goes into the oven, okay? So we are relying on that uh, 
basically the, the metabolic processes of the yeast to uh, put off some gases for us. So if we prematurely kill the yeast, we are going to end up with dough that's very flat and dense, and it's not going to rise at all. Okay. So yeast dies uh, somewhere around 135, uh, which isn't really that hot, right? So when you are um, preparing your yeast, so I have some here that I, I've already kind of started to activate. It has uh, just maybe like 85 degree water right now. And you see it's real nice and foamy on the top. That shows you that the yeast is still alive. So you can go ahead and press that around. Uh, if your yeast uh, has been hydrated, uh, you're getting ready to use it, and it doesn't start making bubbles, it's not alive. Okay? It's, it's past its prime. You're just going to have to go get more yeast. Okay? Um, so that would be the first step. You can always save yourself a lot of uh, cost um, by making sure that your yeast is ready and it is alive before you actually proceed with your, your full recipe. Okay? So that's always the first step. Um, so once you have your, uh, your yeast activated, you would go ahead and proceed with, um, the, for today, the straight dough method. Okay? So the straight dough method is the simplest of the yeast dough um, options that we have. It's similar to like the, uh, the muffin method of breads. Okay? So we're going to have all of our uh, dry ingredients in a mixing bowl with the dough hook. So this will be the first time that you use your dough hook. So the dough hook is this one, okay? So we're going to put all of our dry ingredients in there, um, and then that we're going to follow that up with our wet ingredients, okay? Uh, we're going to mix that together until it comes together in a, in a smooth dough, and then we're going to test it with the window pane test, okay? So just like we've done before, um, like in the first day of class when we found the gluten in the, in the, uh, the dough. So, um, that way, we can uh, watch it basically kind of start to take shape. So what's going to happen inside of your bread with this yeast is that you've got your gluten matrix, right? So we've talked a lot about gluten. So I know you're sick of it already, but um, it doesn't stop, right? So this is your gluten. Isn't it nice? I made it. <laughs> so this is a... Uh, so this is, um, kind of represents all your gluten strands, right? So when you do your window pane test, you stretch it out and you see all those fibers of gluten that are inside there, right? That's this, right? So there is little baby yeast inside here, right? As that yeast starts putting off CO2, what happens? The gluten matrix gets a little bigger, right? And so you, if you think about bread, whenever you eat it, it looks spongy. Right? So those, all those little spongy holes are the result of the, C, of the CO2 that's given off by the yeast. Okay? So what does is, what is yeast like to eat? It likes to eat sugar. Okay? So it's a lot like us. It likes to eat sweets, and it likes a nice tropical environment. Okay? So um, yeast would love Hawaii. So. Okay, so the uh, ideal temps for yeast to grow is uh, somewhere between 80 and 90 degrees, and it should be very humid, okay? So we have a special piece of equipment, it's called the proof box, okay? So it lives right here next to our oven. Uh, the controls are up at the top, so the, the right switch is the on, um, the temperature is on the left, and then the humidity is, is in the middle. Okay. Um, you don't need to have a really fancy proof box to make bread at your house. You just need it to be uh, kind of warm and uh, like a wet dish towel over the top um, generally works for most people at home. Um, here, we like to um, you know, minimize any risk of um, you know contamination, so we don't really use wet dish towels. Um, we cover it with plastic wrap and we put it into our proof box, right? Um, so the proof box just makes things go a little bit faster. Okay, 
There is something called a bench proof where you just leave it on your table at room temperature. So this allows the, the yeast to grow. It grows a little bit slower because it's at room temperature, um, but the yeast is gonna grow regardless. Bench proof. Um, Leave on table at room temperature. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So what we have here is kind of the the ideal range of getting your yeast to grow in kind of a, a quick way, right? Yeast will still grow in lower temperatures. They're just gonna grow slower, okay? So that's called retarding the dough. You can leave it in, um, in a cooler overnight. Um, it will not grow as fast, but it can help, help it develop some extra flavor um, during that period while it's in the refrigerator and it won't grow out of control, okay? So retarding the dough is uh, allowing it to proof at low temperatures. Okay, all right. So let's go ahead and uh, make a dough. So I'm gonna uh, hook this up and then I'm gonna go wash my hands. Make sure it's on. There we go, okay. Wasn't on, okay, let me go wash my hands. So your uh, dough hook goes on just like any other attachment. We're gonna pull over our mise en place here. I have the, um, the bread flour that we're using today is actually a special flour that is made for this. It's called double zero flour. Has anyone ever heard of it before? Double zero flour, have you? Do you know what you use it for? So, um, do you know what the double zero refers to? <laughs> okay, so the double zero refers to the grind size. So, yeah, you, you knew it. So, the, um, the very small uh, grind on the flour um, means that it's going to produce a nice, really, really smooth dough. Um, but it's still going to have that gluten in it that we need uh, to make sure that it will actually um, come together the way that we want it to. Okay, all right, so that's our flour and the salt. Uh, this is my uh, yeast and water. Go ahead and pour that in. And then this, this recipe has a little bit of honey in it and some oil. So you wanna make sure you get all out. You don't wanna waste any. Honey's expensive and oil's expensive. So you, you wanna always watch your food cost. All right, so we're just gonna put it on low speed. Number one is fine uh, to start with. Okay. 
Okay. So this is what's called the pickup stage. It basically goes around uh, the uh, sides of the bowl. So if you guys wanna, if you wanna come closer, so you can actually see it. It's just going to go around the sides of the bowl, basically pulling in all of that flour. It's okay to uh, stop it for a second, make sure that all of the flour is getting in there. If it's missing parts of it, it's better to go ahead and uh, try to get it incorporated in the beginning rather than waiting, because then you can kind of end up with some lumps in your dough. All right. So at this point, you want to kind of look at it and see how the um, how the hydration is going. So does it look really dry? Um, is it coming together to make a smooth ball? Yes. It's coming together. It is coming together. Can you like over mix these? Yes. Yes. So that's actually a really good question. You can definitely over mix the dough. Um, if you guys remember from your gluten homework, um, there is a stage called the letdown stage, right? So at the letdown stage, you've basically started to tear the gluten, right? So you've gotten it so tight, you think of it like a rubber band, right? So it's, it's, you know, it's stretching and stretching and stretching, but at some point, it starts to break, right? So once you get to that letdown stage, it's over, right? So if you just over mix it and it's just a little tough, we can just relax it, right? So we just allow it to sit at, uh, out on your table. Um, it, the gluten strands will get less tight and it won't uh, be so, um, so hard, right, to, to, to mess with, right? So right now, this is kind of what we, what we call the, the shaggy mass. So it, it hasn't really smoothed out yet, but it has uh, started to mostly come together. Okay. All right. So it's picking up almost all the, the rest of it. So this is kind of all the stages that it goes through. Uh, you just kind of have to be patient with it. Let it, let it pick up everything. And then uh, once you have that nice smooth dough, that's when we're going to start doing the window pane test. Okay. All right. So it's just going to keep going for a little bit. If you guys want to uh, sit back down. So we always kind of re rely on window pane, right? So um, we know from our homework that pH and humidity and all kind, you know, different flower brands, all these things can affect um, how well the gluten is going to actually develop. So we always kind of rely on what we see more so than what the recipe says. So if the recipe says five minutes, that could be way over mixed. You know, you, you got to be able to kind of watch it and use your own judgment a little bit. Okay, so um, just for the, the sake of showing you, let's pull it down and let's, let's look at it. So I don't think that it's smooth yet, but we, let's do a window pane test uh, anyways, right? So as I'm kind of pulling it, I know that it's not ready because whenever I pull it, it kind of just comes, it falls apart, right? So it hasn't become nice and stretchy yet we need to give it a little bit more time to do that. Okay, all right, so while we do that, can you pass me one soft spot, anybody over there? Um, the smaller one. Sorry. Okay. So after you make your dough, you're going to go ahead and start on uh, preparing your sauce. This is perfect. Yeah, so it's not that much sauce. You don't need a huge pot. A small pot will be just fine for you. We're just going to let that work.
Nope, it's still not quite ready. Okay. All right, so we're gonna sanitize. All right, so we're gonna get ready. Um, it was sanitized prior, but since we're switching to another um, uh, activity, I like to go ahead and sanitize again. So our sauce requires that we actually like cut up a few things. So we're gonna use the uh, green cutting boards. Green cutting boards are for vegetables. All right, so um, you'll pull out a chef's knife. So, um, to get it started, um, it, it calls for some uh, minced garlic, so I went ahead and did that. Um, you also need to get some onion. So this is, a, this is a baking class. We don't do a whole lot of vegetables in here, so I just wanted to kind of review uh, some knife safety. Uh, so the, the ends uh, we, t we take off, but um, the, paper, the paper skins we do take off. However, anything extra, we do save that for stock, right? So we don't want to waste. We can give that to um, saucier class and they can make stock out of it. Uh, but we don't, we don't save the paper skins here. So anything extra, like little uh, pieces of onion that you're not gonna use, you can go ahead and just put those in one gallon container and we can um, donate those over to the other class. This one doesn't wanna peel. <laughs> there we go. All right, just keep your station clean. Okay, so my dough's looking a little smoother now, so I wanna go ahead and uh, try it again. So just kinda gently pull. If you pull fast, it's never gonna, you're never gonna be able to see it anyway, so just go ahead and uh, pull it really nice and slow. And then um, right now we can, we can see that it pulls to a nice uh, membrane here, right? So you can, uh, if you guys wanna go ahead and pass that around, that's what you're looking for when you make your own dough. Yeah, looks, yeah, okay. All right, so since we have our dough ready. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in a bowl to proof it. So if you could just pass me like that medium sized bowl and some pan spray. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is just kinda uh, turning the dough so that it will uh, make a nice rounded um, appearance. I, I kinda feel like it makes it like, like a turtle shell, you know, so you're just kinda like, Pulling it, pulling it under and kind of tucking it. It just allows it to uh, grow in a more nice and even shape so that the gluten strands are kind of started to line up the way that we want them to. Perfect. So we don't want it to get stuck to our bowl. So we're gonna go ahead and spray the bowl. Ooh, sorry. So just enough for it to not stick. You don't need a whole lot. And then we're gonna cover with some plastic wrap. Uh, Sarah, can you pass me the plastic wrap? Just a piece so I can put over top. Okay, all right, so for the sauce, while your dough is proofing, we're gonna make use of that time, that downtime, and go ahead and make the sauce, okay? So when you're holding a knife, you're gonna pinch the blade here, so you actually choke up on the knife. Some of you are culinary students and you're more used to knife skills, but um, I wanna review for our uh, pastry students. 
Okay. Okay, so it's covered, uh, rule of thumb with dough, if you are not messing with it, always cover it, right? So if you are proofing it or if you're like shaping it on your table and you're having to like cut it into smaller pieces, uh, try to keep it covered just so that it doesn't dry out. If it dries out, it tends to crack on the surface and then it doesn't grow properly. So we're gonna put this in the proofer. And we'll let that grow. So we're looking for it to double in size. Right? So once it doubles in size and you kind of push on it with your fingers and it jumps like halfway back, right? So if you push it, it's going to be a little bit spongy and soft. Um, if it's super soft and it collapses, you've overproofed it, right? Which is bad. Um, but if you push on it and you really, your fingers really don't go into it at all, uh, it needs more time, right? So uh, once we get to that point, I'll kind of show you exactly what we're, what we're looking for. Um, but general rule of thumb before you even start messing with it, you're looking for it to be about twice as big as what it was when it, when it first goes in. Okay. Okay, so let's start our sauce. You're going to um, start with your onion. So the, um, your hand position is that it's sort of like a claw, right? So your, your thumb always goes back behind so that you don't accidentally shave off part of your thumb, right? Um, the, the cut that we're gonna do is actually a dice. So uh, we want to uh, slice it horizontally first, make a few horizontal cuts. You want to try to keep it together. You want to try to not uh, cut any parts off before you start cutting uh, the, the squares, the dices. Okay, all right. So then you're just going to go straight down, and then that equals little square cuts. Okay, so that's the way that we dice an onion. So it's a little bit uh, more tricky of a vegetable to dice. Okay, so for this one, I think we needed um, maybe like two ounces of uh, onion. So I'm going to uh, save this for another team for you guys to use. And we're going to go ahead and um, saute the onions. All right. So I'm going to take this off of here. Okay. All right, so I need just a little bit of uh, oil on the bottom, just so it doesn't stick. So I'm gonna wait for the pan to heat up. So you always have to wait. Uh, if you put them in right away, it's basically it's sweating the onions and it doesn't uh, actually, uh, it's not a saute. So we want them to actually jump when they go into the pan and turn slightly brown. So it just adds a little bit of flavor. Um, so we'll add in the onions first. Uh, I always do onions first and then garlic. The garlic is a little bit smaller and tends to burn a little faster. So they're always going to go in on top of the onions. Um, and then we're going to put in our um, tomato sauce and then all the seasonings that, that go in with that. Okay. All right. So waiting for that to heat up a second. I'm going to put these for another team. Do, do, do. Can I get a, a container? Sorry. <laughs> I might just give them to you. There you go. Y'all can use these. Okay, so there should be a little sizzle wherever you put them in the pan. Um, you want to kind of avoid, avoid using the, the blade because you can uh, slice your hand that way. All right, so we're going to get that cooking for a second. 
And then we'll add in the garlic and uh, the tomato sauce. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and start uh, with the mise en place for the, the dough. Okay. So let's start with uh, measuring out our ingredients. So you're going to need the active dry yeast, which is on the back table. Um, the water. Uh, is actually in two portions. Uh, they ask you for hot water and then also for uh, cool water. The hot water you use to activate the yeast. Okay, but do, um, I think you're, hold on, I'll, I'll correct it. Um, and then you proceed the way that I showed you. Our dough has been proofing. Uh, we're gonna go check on it. So it's been on vacation. We're gonna see how much it's had to eat. Everybody eats good on vacation, right? Yes. Yes. All right. So this was mine. This is the original one that we started with. This was uh, someone's that was just recently put in there. So we can see that it has definitely doubled in size from what we originally had. So you always want to make sure that you give it that time to actually grow, right? So here we can see um, that it does look nice and fluffy. I've already washed my hands. I recently sanitized my station, so we are ready to go. So what I want to do is just kind of like touch it gently and see if my fingerprints can go in there. Um, so you can go ahead and uh, pass that around. So while you pass that around. <laughs> yeah, so it's nice, nice and spongy. So at, at this point, what we would do is actually punch the dough. So we want to degas it slightly so that we can get out any really big gas bubbles and we can get ready to actually shape it the way that we want. So this is a standard um, procedure that you would do with any uh, yeast spread product. Um, you're typically always going to uh, degas it. Different people do it different ways. So the most common is just to, like one good punch. Um, don't just beat the crap out of it. Like we're not. Uh, you're not going to take out all your aggression on it because you don't want to undo all that um, fluffiness that we've been working towards. Just one good, good punch. Some people like to throw it on the table. Um, there's many different ways to degas your dough. Okay. So um, for you guys, you will actually cut it in half. So I have a clean bench scraper here. So each, each partner gets a half, okay? So this one I'm not gonna work with right now, so I'm just gonna put it off to the side. Okay. Okay. All right, so when you're making pizza, it's really just more stretching the dough than it is um, actually uh, rolling it or anything like that. Pizza dough should should be fairly um, user friendly in that it's not going to fight you too much. If it is, you probably overworked it in like one of the first steps. So you you want to make sure that the bottom part is as even as you possibly can get it, and then we're going to turn it a little bit under with just your fingers. If you want to come closer, you can, so you can see. So this just makes that the edge of the crust that you're used to seeing. Okay. And I'm going to, at this point, place it onto the, the tray that I want to actually cook it on. So this has already some uh, nonstick spray on it. But I'm going to sprinkle a little cornmeal. The cornmeal is um, that dusty stuff that comes off of your pizza whenever you eat it. So that is uh, the standard um, way to make the pizza dough nonstick so that it, it's, it glides real easily into a pizza oven. So if you are using a pizza oven, they would just kind of the, um, the cornmeal that's on the bottom, it would just kind of help it slide off of the pizza peel into the, uh, the brick oven. Uh, we're going to use our, our regular oven today. So 
we're gonna, it's just going to put it on a sheet pan. Okay, so I'm just using the side of my hands to make sure that we get a nice uh, edge on the pizza. Okay. All right. And then we're going to take our sauce. So you have the sauce. Perfect. Thank you. That's okay. All right. So you want enough sauce to cover it, but you don't really want it to be saucy. So you want it to... Um, get covered it is a flavor but uh, if you put too much sauce it tends to get very soggy on the bottom and then the the crust will not be crispy so kind of make it make sure it goes all the way out to the edge and then the toppings are your choice i have a few here that are already prepared uh, standards this one is a mozzarella cheese um, lots of people put different cheeses on pizzas. As long as it melts really good, then um, it can make a good pizza cheese. Mozzarella is definitely the favorite. Um, I have a little bit of Parmesan mixed in just for that, um, that really strong Parmesan flavor. But we don't want to just you know, cover the whole thing in Parmesan because Parmesan doesn't actually melt very well. So um, you want to always kind of mix it with a good melting cheese. Lots of cheese, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're going to put the uh, pepperonis. You want to make sure that um, whenever you're making your pizza that every bite will be similar. So you don't want to have any areas of the pizza that just like uh, is completely forgotten on pepperoni or mushrooms or whatever you're, uh, whatever you're making. So these mushrooms are pretty big so I'm just going to break them up as I kind of put them on. All right, some green peppers, just for some color. And uh, this will bake at uh, 425 until it's nice and golden brown. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, finish up your sauce. And then I'll help you guys with uh, shaping your pizzas, OK? So go ahead and open the oven, stand behind it so you don't get blasted in the face. <laughs> All right, go ahead and grab it. All right, you want to show them? All right, finished pizza. <laughs>